after the uh, regular uh, meeting of the Zoning Commission for the Town of Simsbury, Monday, June 17th. Uh, tonight we will appoint Ned to sit for Amy and Vaughn to sit for Will. All right. And uh, that gives us a quorum. All right. Uh, we have quite a bit to go through tonight, so let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, I reviewed the uh, minutes. I didn't have anything in particular, did. did you, Ed? I have a comment. Lines 31 through 33, uh, that was the vote on the consent agenda. It has me making the motion and, yeah. and doing the seconding. Oh, all right. I don't know who did that, so we can straighten that out after. Okay. New, new form of Robert's rules. Right. All right. If you want to volunteer to make the motion, you can volunteer to second it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> a few minutes based on that. Uh, she'll go back and look. Just we'll give her right. the notes, and so we'll we'll move to adopt the minutes uh, as amended to reflect the actual motions uh, that were given. All right. Um, we have several public hearings. You want to read the call? Legal right. notice: Town of Simsbury Zoning Commission regular meeting. The Zoning Commission of the Town of Simsbury will hold a public hearing at a regular meeting to be held on Monday, June 17, 2013, at 7 p.m in the main meeting room at the Simsbury Town Offices, 933 Hop Meadow Street, Simsbury, Connecticut, on the following. One, application 13-26 of Ensign Bickford Realty, owner, for a special exception, pursuant to Article 10, Section D of the Simsbury Zoning Regulations for excavation and removal of materials on the property located at 437 Hop Meadow Street. Map F14, Block 103, Lot 005-3, Zone I-2. Item number two, application 13-31 of Mark Nolan, agent for Town of Simsbury, owner, for a special exception pursuant to Article 10, Section H of the Simsbury Zoning Regulations for a temporary liquor permit for a series of events on the property located at 73 Walcott Road, Map 102, Block 439, Lot 002, Zone I-1. Item number three, application 13-32 of David M. and Cheryl Cordani owners for a special exception pursuant to Article 7, Section C9 of the Simsbury Zoning Regulations for an accessory dwelling unit on the property located at 32 Lucy Way. Map I-13, Block 103, Lot 018, Zone R80. And item number four, application 13-33 of Gifts of Love, agent for the Town of Simsbury owner, for a special exception pursuant to Article 10, Section 8, H of the Simsbury Zoning Regulations for a temporary liquor permit for an event on the property located at 73 Walcott Road, Map 102, Block 439, Lot 2, Zone I-1. At this hearing, interested persons may appear and be heard, and written communication will be received. Edward J. Pabich, Secretary, dated this third day of June 2013 at Simsbury, Connecticut. Thank you, Ed. Uh, we'll take these in the order, and we will uh, we'll run this meeting as it's outlined in the agenda, which means we'll go through all four presentations, and then we'll come back and consider them. So out of fairness to everybody here. <clears throat> I'm Gus Kaswinski from Ensign Victor Realty. We have Bob Stevens from Stevens Landscape Architect and Andy Defani is the president. We're here to talk about um, <clears throat> the entrance to the Potter Forest here is just to give you a uh, quick overview. Here's Hop Meadow Street, here's Potter Forest Drive. This is the site. It's a 39 acre site, large site, a lot of wetlands. Um, here's the traffic light right here. There's a big ridge right in the middle. Um, and we're, we're trying to prepare this site for development. And so we have to go in, clear it, regrade it, and basically make it flat at 2% grade for a parking lot. Um, and so we got to clear it. And it's approximately 94,000 yards of material to remove from there. Uh, just to, to give you an idea, if, if you did it over two years, uh, if you did it every day, it'd be 1.3 trucks per hour at 17 yards of truck. So even if you only uh, did it every other day, it's still only three trucks per hour, which is like one truck every 20 minutes. So it's, it's when you look at the scheme of things, it's about six and a half acres, but it's 94,000 yards. And uh, Bob will talk about some of the technical details. This 
or should I stand here? That's fine. Yeah. Just so you're comfortable. For the record, Robert Stevens, landscape architect. I trust that you have these in your folders. Uh, we got them Some emailed to us. us. I, yeah, we'll share. Do you have one, Dan? Yeah. Or do you have a couple of copies of yeah. right. these? Uh, they're a lot easier to see uh, the colors. Not all of these are in colors. I think I might have that uh, here. As Gus says, the, the site is on the corner of, of Hotline Street and Power Forest Drive. Um, Gus meant to say 29.8 acres, not 39.8 acres. Um, the area shown in blue is wetland. The area shown in yellow is upland soils. Um, these wetlands have been mapped. This wetland was mapped back in the 1980s and it was a subject of remapping of the town's map. Uh, just uh, two weeks ago, this area, this line of the wetland, the southern boundary, was the subject of an application before the Wetlands Commission to establish that as a field map sur survey wetland line. The remaining line here is from the town's wetland map, just superimposed, since we're not doing work in that area, it would seem prudent to have to the field map that. The soils here are uh, basically uh, stratified sand and gravels, uh, very similar to the material that was might be aware of site four on Powder Forest, where the, uh, the material was chipped from the, uh, the storm a couple of years ago. That site uh, is similar in soils material. Um, the existing conditions on the site on a larger scale. The site uh, rises up from Powder Forest Drive, it drops off to the wetland to the north, it drops off to the small wetland to the south. There's the open green area that you're all familiar with, the, the nice lawn area out front with the uh, crab apple trees along the front. That lawn area basically stays. Uh, when I get to the planting plant, I'll show you. We're cutting part of it off here. And it basically stays. And there's some uh, nice spruce trees that were planted here a number of years ago. We only lose one of those trees as part of this. We're going to actually preserve those trees. A very nice back set, back, backdrop for this lawn area. Uh, the topography, uh, uh, as I said, it, it just it rises up. It's about 40 feet above Powder Forest Drive at that those two points. The grading plan. We're taking the grades down to just above Powder Forest Drive, opposite Powder Forest Drive. So it's just slightly above Powder Forest Drive. And we're creating a platform that's at 2% grade. Um, for reference, the site, site four, if you drive by and look into that site, that was graded at 5%. This is going to be a little flatter, it's at 2%. Uh, there will be a, an anti-tracking pad constructed 400 feet in from, from uh, Hot Metal Street with a paved entrance, paved apron, and then a, a washed stone anti-tracking pad that's about 60 feet long. There will be a detention pond built in this area, temp will be temporary for, for this construction and possibly left for future construction so it doesn't have to be duplicated in the future, but ultimately removed in the end when when the site is developed. This detention pond was sized uh, for 10 year, 25 year, and 100 year storm, so it would not overtop and it would detain the water and let it out at a controlled rate uh, with velocities that will not create any erosion. We're developing a, a, uh, a 25 foot long level spreader in an area where there's established grasses. It's going to be built in such a way as a detail showing it that it doesn't it doesn't disturb the grasses. So as soon as the thing is built, it will be already stabilized to be able to receive the, the, the uh, reduced runoff. There was a drain uh, study and report that was submitted to Rich Sawitsky, town engineer. He reviewed that report along with a set of plans and concurred with the methodologies of the, of the study and the conclusions of the report. And I believe that you have probably have in your files a letter to that effect already. This 
is the erosion control plan, and it, we comply with the town standards for erosion con for sediment control, as well as the state uh, standard <coughs> guidelines for erosion and sediment control. There's a, a temporary diversion swale that's going to be built on the north side, so the drainage can never get past that swale, and then it's silt fenced on the outside of that, thing, that swale. The entire downhill side on the north and on the south is completely silt fenced. There will be silt fence check dams along the way to reduce the, the velocities and, and minimize the transportation of silt. There's a, in the set of plans, there's a, a erosion control detail plan that basically says everything that I just said and a lot more. And also has a construction sequencing to be done in such a way that minimizes erosion. It's, it's contemplated that the work will be done in two phases to, to reduce the impact. In phase one is this area here. It's not quite half the volume of, of the total but it's about half of the area. And uh, there's additional silt fence that goes in just particular to phase one. Um, and this just shows the temporary grade between phase one and phase, phase two. The phase two plan just shows the phase two area conforming to the original grading plan, the grades that will be established at the end of, of the uh, removal. On both the phase one plan and the phase two plan, there's, a, there's a, a construction sequence of what has to be done first, second, third in order to, to minimize the erosion. And then at the end of the, the project, and it, it, Areas will be stabilized as they move along. It won't be held until the end and then oh, stabilize it. As areas get graded to the finished grade, it will be topsoil and, and seeded and stabilized. In the end, this area here will still remain long. Some of it will have been disturbed and we'll reestablish it. Uh, but we maintain the lawn along the edge and that large open green area. The rest of the area will be seeded with a, a mix of uh, warm season grasses and wildflowers to create a meadow that for the duration that the site is setting there, waiting for the development to, to occur, it can have some value to the, to the songbirds, which is important. And we told that, uh, I, I could hardly understand this, but Simsbury is low on the amount of meadows. And we were encouraged to create meadow grasses and so we have done that. Uh, planting, it would be shrub planting, and initially we were going to put some shrub plants in the areas that we were closest to the wetland. There were plants that were compatible to the wetland uh, environment and helped to just protect those areas. When we went through the uh, wetlands approval, uh, it was uh, discussed by our environmental consultant that there was little value of putting any planting on the south side. There was great value of putting it on the north side because the sunlight is going to be going into the wetland where it wouldn't have before. So he suggested that we move these plants to the north side. The Conservation Commission concurred with that, so that's our intent. Do you have to answer any questions about that? I, did, I just have a couple other things. When you look at the site, um, across the street to the south, there's commercial office buildings. We own the site to the west. To the north is primarily the dino land. Um, and then just directly north of it is a large wetlands. So we're minimum 400 uh, feet from any residential. Uh, there are there are a couple houses across the street, but they're technically on uh, commercial property. Um, we have quick access on Powder Force Drive out to a light onto Route 10. So you're not driving, you know, none of the trucks will be going through neighborhoods and things and uh, it'll limit the disturbance to, uh, you know, a commercial area. So we think that, you know, we're, we're not going to disturb the neighbors and, um, or the traffic patterns in, the, in any of the neighborhoods. 
I understand what's been said, and I, I'm sure that'll be a quality job. But uh, what I think we ought to just focus on is really the quantity of material going off site, which is about, I did a, a quickie, I, you gave a statistic, but I did a quick number too that says about 5,000 truckloads. And, and, and I think we should at least understand where the material is going and what your path is through town to move 5,000 trucks. Um, we don't know what, what our plan would be once we get the approval. We would go out to people like Tim's Croft or there's a couple other people out there who would manage the bid for us. They would actually come in. So you didn't do your deal yet with it? Right. We haven't done a deal with anybody. And then pretty much they would they would get it open and then when they have a requirement to, to deliver material, that's when they operate the bid. Yeah. All right. Um, that's about 17 yards a truck load. Yeah, well, I said 10, I said 10,000, 100,000 yards, 20 okay. yards a truck. That gave me yeah. an easy okay. number. <laughs> is there a stream that comes across the street? Yeah, there's Second Brook. Second Brook, which comes uh, Back through the, the Dial property. It cool. comes, goes under and into Hazel, the back of Hazel Meadow. How close is, if you're excavating, to get to where the, to that brook? This is 100 scale. So we're about 500 feet away from it, from the brook, from the brook. How about from the, the wetlands area? From the wetlands? Are you going right up to the wetlands area? No, I think the closest place is indicated here. It's a 30 feet plus or minus. Set back from the actual line of the wetlands. Right. And 28 feet. This one here, it's, but all this is going to pitch this way. We're staying 100 feet from the property line because the regulations call for not excavating below the grade within 100 feet. And then what ultimately gets built on this pad? Just curious. It's a office building or yeah, some yeah, some sort of commercial thing. That's why we graded it at two percent. And we just we figured typically. Well, what we've seen on the other side is people, when they come and look at it, they go, oh, this is wonderful. You can visualize it because there's no trees. It's graded, and they go, yeah, building here, parking here. Yeah, it's ready to go. The, the problem with trying to market this site today is when they look at it, it's very different, difficult to visualize. And then when it takes, you know, two plus years to get rid of the material, they're kind of that, it just doesn't meet anybody's time frame. So the intent really is to get the site ready for development. So you would take the full two years to, to uh Make yeah, I mean, you have to look at the economy. If the economy was maybe moving a little faster, um, it might get done a little quicker. But I don't, I don't, I don't see it happening a whole lot quicker unless the economy miraculously moves forward quickly. Well, they dug a pretty big hole down in Farmington for the Jackson Lab building, and there were trucks everywhere, just anecdotally, and it's, it was a big issue. Yeah. And they were literally everywhere, coming and going. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yeah, two, two, yeah, years, point, two years of that, huh? Mm -hmm. Two straight years of that. Well, I don't think you're talking about the concentration and the number of trucks. This was all going to be done in a matter of months, but right. uh, probably the same amount or more. Or but spread out over several years. What we saw in the last site where we actually took off um, 120. 120, and that took three years or so. And we never really had any complaints. Um, it's primarily very sharp sand. Um, so one of the nice things is you can dig in the winter because it doesn't hold the water, so it doesn't really freeze. Um, All right. Any other questions from the commission? The, on the other side of Powder Forest Drive, if you go up a grade to get to the building. Why are you going to grade on this side and not doing the same type of elevation on the other side? We are up from the road. Um, I thought you were going to be level with the road. No, the it's slightly, back side, right? Slightly above. Okay. Yeah. Powder Forest Drive, where we enter there, the we're more, we start off at a minimum 10 feet above uh, Route 10. When you drive in Powder Forest Drive, it rises up pretty quickly, and we're up above that. We're actually 8 feet up at this point, 6 feet up at this point. This entrance will be near where the Vita Route entrance is? Or almost. Up, almost. Up from it? Yeah, just a little closer to Route 10 than to Vita Route entrance. 
and yet we're up to the Via Route site, there's a, probably a 10 foot elevation off the road to where the pad is. Well, it'll be here too. It depends on how you're looking into the site. If you're looking down this way, it's going downhill. If you're looking this way, it's going uphill. I guess I, I misunderstood. I thought what you were saying was you were going to bring it down level with the street. Slightly, slightly above. I said slightly. So slightly yeah, but it depends on what part of the street you're looking. <laughs> depends on what part of the street you're looking. Right, because right? the street's pitch, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Are there uh, any other questions that the commissioners have for the? Uh, Question is: Is there any concern about the impact of? Suppose they got some deal that, you know, if you guys get it done in 90 days, we'll do the deal. What happens then? Well, that, that would, have let, let's have that discussion right? when we consider, but you're asking them a question. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. What, what control do we have over night and day for 90 days? Um, I think that would make people upset. And is that something we have jurisdiction over? Well, there, there are some zoning questions we have to discuss when we discuss this, okay. these are this is the open hearing, mm -hmm. in which we can ask questions about of them of the project. Okay. The, the other, the, the part that's already been left back there, where they put the trees. Yeah. Is this going to be approximately level with that, or is this going to be a lower level, or when it's finished? And, and is that your property? Yes, that's all right. Yeah. It's. The middle of that site is elevation 240. The middle of this site is elevation 202. Okay, so part of Forest Drive goes pretty steep. And there's a wetland between the two. Oh, there is? Yes. See that little blue strip there? Yeah. Uh, so that the area just to the left of the little blue strip is, is the place that you leveled earlier? That was yeah, that right area there. That's it? Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Is there anyone in the audience that has uh, would like to say anything about this project? Questions for? Please. <coughs> uh, state your name and your address. Ken Williams, homeowner at uh, One Candlewick Court, which is right on the other side of the wetlands from where this project occurred. The um, during the day, when will these trucks be moving? Generally speaking, you know, are you allowed? Are you allowed to um, move or excavate 24 hours a day? No, seven days. Well, uh, I'm sure the commission will put some sort of uh, guidelines on us, but but typically the contractors work just from seven to five. I mean, no, nobody. I haven't seen where anybody runs 24 hours a day. There's, I know, re yeah, there's really no. But if you, to the gentleman's yeah. question, if you had the deal of a lifetime, in 90 days, you've got to get that prepared. That's a lot of material to move. So Technically, that's why we're here today, because we know it's going to take us a couple of years. If, if we had a deal and we had to do something quickly, and we had to come in front of the commission and say, geez, we've got to get rid of this material in, you know, in a couple of months, then there would be a lot of truck. So we're trying to do it now over time. OK. When you exit the property, will you be going left or right? It depends where the material's going. Okay. I, so you can't know. I, yeah, right. It just depends where it's going. Where will the water from, ultimately, where will the runoff from, I mean, you're talking about eventually down the road when you've got parking lots and acres of... The way the... It's maybe not a question right. pertinent to... Well, no. The, the way the drainage works now, they have this... Uh, low impact drainage where what they're trying to do now is instead of having catch basins at the edge of the parking lots to get the water to the wetlands, what they're doing now is they're infiltrating it under under the soil. So the intent is whatever water is hitting the soil goes into the ground through some sort of infiltrators. And if you have a very intense uh, rain over a short period of time, you can you can overwhelm your drainage systems and then it'll top out and run over into the wetlands. But in the past, you used to just 
get it quickly to the wetlands and get it down to the Farmington River. Now it's they're trying to take all the rain, whatever hits it, and drop it into the ground. Okay. From your understanding of Second Brook, yep. will it um, be able to accommodate any great increase in volume of? The intent of the LID regulations is not to overwhelm any of the brook, and you have to even look at, um, you know, like for instance, parking areas. The water coming off in the middle of summer is too hot, and if it if it comes off too hot, it goes into the brook and it kills some of the fauna and the flora. So you're really trying to stop all that, put it underground, so it gets cool and dry and goes and saturates the ground as opposed to running into the brook. You're trying not to add any more rain into the brook than is there today. Trying to keep everything the same. Is there any possibility of exit from this project yeah. that would cause um, traffic down the little Candlewood Court? I, I'm trying to visualize this. It, There's it a huge like wetlands between our site and, and yours in your, your neighborhood. There's a huge wetland set. Yes, but at the very end yep. of, of the lane, yep. The, yep. There, the property looks like it is, there's potential for putting a relatively small road through and possibly into this property. Is that, that. is that realistic? No. Or? Uh, I'll address that. Candlewood Court is right here. Yes, sir. The cul-de-sac is at this point. Perfect. Uh, the wet the wetlands in this area comes within 75 feet of the end of the property here, opposite the cul-de-sac. There's no there's no room for any development in there, and there, we could not cross the wetland to come up there. That just wouldn't, wouldn't be allowed under the wetland regulations. The yellow in your map is the wetlands. Is non wetland. Is non wetland. Non -wetland. Can you point the blue is hard sir, but can you point at the end of Candlewood Court? It's right here. But so it's on developed prop it, it 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 ends at developed property, is that correct? When I say the yellow? The the yellow is is upland soil, but it would not be developed as part of this. It has no practical value for this other than ratio land. Yeah, it, okay. Thank you very much. The water from this hill from the lake now goes into second brook. It runs down the hill to second brook. What well, doesn't go into the ground now goes into second brook. Anyone else from the audience wish to speak? All right, we will um, let's move on to our second public hearing. We will leave all the since we opened these all at once, Ed. I think we'll leave them all open and we'll deal with okay. them each at the end of the uh, public hearing. That's fine. All right. Yep. All right. So second is uh, application number thirteen thirty one of Mark Nolan uh, for special exception, the town of Simsbury, for a temporary liquor permit for a series of events uh, at seventy three Walcott Road. Good evening. My name is Laura Young, and I actually live in Avon. But I'm here tonight on behalf of the community farm of Simsbury, on Mark's behalf, because he's actually in England with his family. And thank you very much for having me put together the uh, projector. I do have a very brief presentation just to give you an idea of what a farm-to-table dinner looks like. This summer, we have two farm-to-table events, which will both support the financial needs of the farm. Specifically, right now, we're trying to fund 40% of a tractor. Uh, we've received a grant from the Department of Agriculture um, for 60% of the cost of a new tractor, and so this will help support our needs, hopefully with the money that we raise. And I don't know how many of you have been to the farm. I'm sure many of you know where we are, but our mission is that we are a collaborative organization that promotes education and local agriculture while practicing sound environmental stewardship, preserving the town farm, and benefiting those in need. This is our high tunnel across the street um, where much of the growing goes on during the winter and the nearby fields where we grow and produce food for food security programs and families in need in the area. 
Here is a picture of the farm, and if you look directly in the back, you will see the community classroom with the doors wide open. That is the general area where we set up uh, the bar area. You'll see an umbrella there in between the white farmhouse and the barn. So when people enter, that is where they will be entering the event. Our tent and tables and the bar area overlook our teaching garden. And by a teaching garden, I mean exactly that, that when kids come to visit for field trips, Maggie, our master gardener there on the right, works with kids to teach them all about healthy lifestyles and nutrition and shows them exactly where their food comes from. This is the restroom facility located right at the edge of the space where I first showed you in front of that community education classroom. So people enter the farm to table space in between the barn on your left and the community education building in the middle there. And they come through and they um, have to sign in. That's the bar set up there to the right. And I've pulled together some pictures for you from three of our events last summer. We were very fortunate to have the Iron Frog, Iron Frog Tavern and Metro Beast and Harvest Cafe put together fabulous meals for our farm to table events. Water is always served at every table. Uh, this was a dish prepared by Chris Pressberry last summer. The folks who come to the event are typically people from the area, although we do get people from further away, um, mostly young adults working uh, in the area. And you can see the kinds of folks who come. We don't get any college kids or you know, people who are not there who would be of age. This is my second year at the farm working on these events. But we also have several staff people who have been doing this for several years prior. Chris Prosperi is uh, featured here. You can see um, from last summer, he helped out putting together one of the dinners. And this year, we are also very fortunate that Chris Eddy from Winvian, which is a Relais Chateau uh, five-star resort in Litchfield Hills um, that also believes in supporting local agriculture, is going to come and prepare a meal for us. And this is what it looks like once the sun has gone down. Any questions? So what's typical attendance? Well, they actually uh, last year got so popular that we ended up having tables you can see slightly outside the tent area. So we have decided this year to set a limit of 60 ticket sales just because it, it's, um, it's harder to serve more people. Sure. Um, it's hard to say no when people want to come to these events, but we feel that we are best um, going to be able to serve a maximum of 60 of each event this year. And your dates for these two events are set um, with rain dates? We do have rain dates, although we have very, very lucky. So please, the weather gods, we hope are going to be good to us. But um, the first date will be July 31st with a rain date of August 1st. That's for the Metro Beast Dinner with Chris Prosperi. And then on September 4th with a rain date of September 5th, we have uh, Chris Eddy coming from Wayland to prepare a farm to table dinner for us. And there will be three staff members all trained as SIPS, TIPS certified servers, and several of us have also worked in the serving industry before. Serving beer and wine, or? Correct. That's it. Mm -hmm. No hard liquor. No hard liquor. Any other questions from the commission? Anyone from the audience have any questions or comments? Thank you very much. Thank you. Our third uh, application is uh, application number 1332 of David M. and Cheryl Cordani, owners for a special exception pursuant to Article 7 uh, for a dwelling uh, unit on the lo property located at 32 Lucy Way. Is there anyone here from that group? They had asked that this be uh, opened and continued until next week, and the commission is fine, or until the next meeting, the commission is fine with that. Did anyone come to speak on that subject tonight? Good. All right. So we'll. <laughs> uh, so we will uh, take that up. Uh, it will have, for statutory reasons, been open tonight, but uh, continued until next week, uh, two weeks, July first. Uh, so that brings us to item number four, application number thirteen dash thirty three, gifts of love. 
uh, for a special exception pursuant to Article 10 uh, for a temporary liquor permit for an event and the property to be held, interestingly enough, at 73 Walcott Road, Community Farm. Hi. Hi. I'm Deb from um, Gifts of Love. Deb, and last name? Last name? Uh, Galley. And are you a resident of Simsbury? I am a resident of Avon. Okay. Um, and I just actually started with Gifts of Love. I've been employed there for a couple of weeks now, and I'll be working on their events and marketing for them. So, really looking forward to that. And um, we are looking for a permit to hold one of our major fundraising events of the year. We have two every year. Um, this one is called Ready, Set, Cook. And we would like to hold it this year at the um, Community Farm of Sainsbury, which you just got a beautiful presentation on. <laughs> so that makes my job all that easier. Um, this event will be held on August 9th. And it is, um, as I said, it's one of our major fundraisers. And we will have an assortment of um, celebrity chefs and um, it's like a combination of celebrity teams that will be cooking, um, like a cooking contest. Um, so that's basically the event. Um, we expect, we've had it um, about 150 people each year, and we've been working very closely with the farm mm. to um, determine the best way to handle parking and um, the details that go along with that amount of traffic. Where did you hold this event last year? It was held at the Bell Terrace. Okay. So so this is orders of magnitude bigger than the dinners that you've done. It does. Have you ever ha <laughs> held a dinner this large at the farm before? We have not held a dinner at the mm -hmm. farm. We have held the autumn evening on the farm event, which draws upwards of 500 people. Mm -hmm. Different this event. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Yeah. It's, it's actually not a dinner. Um, this is more of a um, heavy hors d'oeuvres, um, stationed appetizers. We won't it's be having sit down. Um, it's more of um, an entertainment type event that you can mingle and you know taste some of the foods and things like so that. So does everyone arrive and leave approximately the same time? I'm thinking traffic mostly, traffic and parking mostly. Mm -hmm. right. It goes from... I believe the hours are 6.30 to 9. I can double check on that for you, but it is. It will be set up like that. Um, we are ha going to have um, either a culinary school group, um, Boy Scouts, what have you, but we will have people whose jobs that night will be specifically for parking. Um, we will be renting lighting for the pasture area where the parking will be held. Um, so we're gonna have it well lit. Um, and I can provide you with you know, finalized rental lighting and things like that if you need that. Is it across the street in the pasture? Or no, it's on the same the side. Same side? Mm -hmm. And uh, will you use the Simsbury police for traffic control? Yes, no? I would assume that we would have to. I haven't gone to that place yet, but um, it's a pot. It, whatever we need to do, possible. To, obviously, we would need to be in um, communication with them. Right. Right. So. All right. Any other questions? Uh, what will you be serving? It will be a regular bar. It will be a cash bar. Um, so it's your basic bar mixed full drinks liquor. Mm -hmm. full liquor mm -hmm. right. and I have on our application the liquor license for the company that will be handling that and all that you've hired a, uh, we do yep we have, we've hired a it's not volunteers no right. this is trained um, you know, and there it's a $50 charge to come to this event so we don't expect that the clientele that comes to this event are, you know, the application coming unless they really, you know, want to be it there too. Your enjoy. application says beer and wine. It does. Yes, it okay. does. Oh, then maybe I'm sorry. You the new girl. Go, you might want to double check that. I will. I do see that here too. All right. 
and I will double check. Yeah. Huh? What's that? No martinis. <laughs> I can clarify that and get back to you first thing tomorrow. All right. All right. Any other questions? Any comments from the audience? Do I leave this application with you tonight? I'm going to tell everybody what's going to happen yeah, yeah. tonight. Okay. So we're, we're flying without a net here tonight. So, okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we do not have um, staff representation tonight, which is why it's running so seamlessly for us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think what we would like to do is, uh, so let's go through each of these applications and tell you sort of where we are. Um, the excavation um, the Commission does not yet have the benefit of the staff's report of this I'm glad we could have the hearing tonight uh, suggest that we leave it open until July 1st uh, let the staff do their work and maybe we can visit the site or whatever but be in a position to try to wrap this up for you on July 1st all right all right um, with the uh, let's see so the second would be to uh, look at the um, community farms repeat of last two years. And so I would suggest, um, or I'd be looking for a motion to close the public hearing on uh, that topic. So moved. Seconded. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. So that public hearing is closed and now we can, de we can act on that uh, topic. We've already addressed the issue of the uh, uh, Cordani property, so that will be left open. And I would suggest to you that, uh, so that brings us back to the gifts of love, which if you really want a liquor permit for something other than what you applied for, then we can leave the public hearing open until July 1st, since you have a little bit of time here. Um, Otherwise, we could close the hearing and act on the beer and wine permit. Okay. But, but yeah, I think that's what we should do. My apologies. Yeah. And I do see that here, too. It's clearly stated on the okay. application. I didn't fill this application out, so I, I would say so. I just actually All right, so it. if it's not this, so you'll have to change the application and come back either way. So we can close the hearing on this topic, which I suggest we do, and we can act on the application in front of us. If it turns out this isn't what you want, then you'll have to come back on it. Okay, yes, please. Let's just move forward as it is. Thank you. A second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, so now we'll consider these two uh, topics for which the public has had a chance to uh, hear and uh, make comment, and so the uh, Zoning Commission can act. Um, is there any discussion relative to the community farm to farm to table dinners beyond what we've already asked basically just to raise money for a track <laughs> <laughs> well, behind implements last year you know each year we have different needs on the farm uh, and we operate by raising funds through individuals and grants um, and other fundraising needs such as the farm to table dinners and at the moment our number one priority is the new tractor which um, the selectman is also working on with us to help perhaps procure funds through whatever means she might be able to. Um, but right now, that's what we really need because our previous executive director, Tim Goodwin, who I'm sure many of you remember, left with his tractor. So when he left, um, we have been in a position of uh, basically leasing one on a monthly basis. So we just got a $49,999 grant from the Department of Agriculture, and that will uh, help us with the tractor and the pull behind implements that we need, but we still have to come up with the other 40%. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, I'm looking for a motion to- I would move approval. And a second? Second by now. All in favor say aye. 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 Approved. All right. And relative to Gifts of Love, uh, their special event. So moved, seconded. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 So those those events, all three events now are approved. All right. Thank you. I would say with relative now that it's approved, I'm gonna this I'm gonna bet for him that you will need to work with the staff on items related to the liquor permit, traffic control, 
and all of those things. So we, the Zoning Commission has, a, has approved in concept what you've applied for, but there will be other items and things that you need to do with town staff, both of you actually, to be sure that um, you comply. You need a public gathering permit. Right, and so th those, those things will dictate crowd control, uh, lighting, uh, safety, whether or not the police are involved. Okay. All right. Very good, Walter. Okay. Goodbye. And I'll find out tomorrow that we should have done something else, but no, <laughs> we're, we're fine. We're fine. You, uh, this is good. All right. I think we did. I think we did good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So we're now moving on to uh, ap one other application, which is application 1324 of Anthony uh, Frutal. Fructal. 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 Sorry. My apologies. Of uh, Ayub uh, Engineering for a Franchise Realty Interstate Corporation owner for a site plan amendment. The property located at 22 Albany Turnpike, West Simsbury. Do I need to leave the application with you at all? It's notarized and has. Is that the original? Is it already no. To, has it been signed by the selectman and signed by. Um, the it's been signed by. Do you have original signatures? Yep, I have original on here. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, uh, this. They got to come back to the public gathering permit. Well, you just bring it with you when you come back for okay. the other permit. Okay. Because if you give it to one of us, God knows where it'll be. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I may have the original permit. Huh? I may have the original. I don't need the case. Well, there's another one that, that Mary signed, though. Oh. That's the application because they're the owner. Right, I understand. Sorry. Back to McDonald's. Uh, my name is Tony Frock, along with AU Engineering out of Tucket, Rhode Island. I would do some work for McDonald's. Uh, from McDonald's, uh, Ronnie McFarland, she's a regional construction manager from the corporate office. Uh, Jim McGarry is the owner operator of the site, which is uh, along the Albany Turnpike, uh, Bushy Hill Road, right here down very bottom corner of your town, I guess. Um, uh, but McDonald's is proposing a major remodel project. It's a program that they've been implementing in a bunch of their uh, the stores in, in this area. Um, and just wanted to talk a little bit about what they're what they're proposing here. Um, it's about a two and a half acre site. Uh, the building is about 5,000 square feet. Actually, it's a little bit bigger than that. They currently have uh, 117 seats inside. There's an outdoor patio area right here. Um, 85 parking spaces on the site with five handicapped. There's a couple here and right currently, there's a couple here and a couple over here. Um, the drive through wraps around this end of the building. It is a tandem drive through which means the order points are like back to back. You, you get the one, um, you know, if it runs smooth, you know, you pull up, but if somebody stops, you can hold people up. Um, as part of the remodel project, uh, what they're proposing is, and this is the crux of it, is to put a side-by-side -side drive through in. This creates two order points um, for the drive through which is the, um, it's the choke point of a drive through um, Sometimes this line ends up getting back along the building here. They want to get these folks moved through quicker. It's, just, it's more efficient for McDonald's and for Jim's people that are working there. Um, if if uh, uh, Rona likes to use the example of uh, mom and the soccer team gets to the order point and takes five minutes to order. The all the folks coming in to get their coffee can keep moving around the other, you know, the other uh, drive-through. Um, what we'll do as part of this also is we'll maximize uh, the the distance from the order point to the window. McDonald's has done lots of studies of what that distance is to be most efficient as far as keeping those people moving, um, making sure that. They get there in a timely manner, but the food isn't sitting, but getting, am I stealing your thunder here? Right? No, you're good. <laughs> you know, so, hey, they want to keep people happy. You know how it is when you get there and the fries are cold. So um, we, don't want, we don't want that to happen. Um, also, as part of the, as part of the, the site revisions, um, all the handicapped spaces will be moved to this area right here. That's as close as we can get them to the building. Um, there will be some paving work done here bring those all into ADA compliance, um, just make it just easy for those folks to get into the building. Um, the areas in the light gray around the building, that would be this area here, and this area here, and this area right here, that, that's all, no, I apologize. This area here and this area here, that sidewalk that will also be replaced in the interest of making it ADA compliant, um, just that's a McDonald's standard that 
the, the, the folks from here and here can um, get into the two entrances, one here, uh, vestibule here, um, in an in, uh, ADA compliant manner. Can I ask um, you a question about the um, absolutely. Uh, handicap spots? Is there any rules around size of building, size of parking lot, number of spots versus how many handicap? It seems kind of light for the size there. Yes, yes, there is. Um, your your ordinance requires actually your ordinance requires the building to have 37 parking spaces. There's currently 85 spaces on the site. We're proposing 82. We'll be reducing it by three. And those those are spaces that will be lost on this corner here. Um, out of those 85, it's required to have four handicapped parking spaces. So that we do meet the state and local requirement for number number. So based on seats or square footage. Um, actually, it's based on the number of. Oh, you're saying that the total, the amount of parking. No, the ADA spots. It's usually worked out by the number of seats or the square footage of the building, okay. depending on the municipality. Okay. Well, it actually the ADA regulations are usually a percentage of the total number of parking spaces oh, required, okay. which are a function of the number of seats or right. the size of the building. Right. Um, in your case, it's the size of the building. So the size of the building determines the number of parking spaces, and then a certain percentage of that, there's a, there's a table, a very, very fine table on the state building code. Um, and more than 50%, if you happen to need it, you can just go up the drive through not even get out of the car either. Right. So, right. It's not like a typical you know, CDS or something like that where everybody has to get out of the car. Right. More than half the people don't have to get out of the car. Yeah. Yeah, I think the average McDonald's is 70% drive through. Yeah. Um, the site signage will remain the same, you know, entrance and exit signs. There's a there's a clock sign right here that will that will all remain the same. Um, proposed revisions to the building, the elevations are gonna change a little bit. Uh, also part of the uh, the upgrade, uh, the biggest change that you'll notice is the the standard um, what we're all used to, the double mansard roof. For McDonald's, that's going away. This will just be a straight wall with the facade at the top. Um, there will be a roof cap element on an arcade on, on the uh, drive-through side of the building. Um, it will be uh, there'll be hardy plank uh, siding on the entire building. Uh, but given the character of that building and where it's at, and I know there was a big uh, discussion over this when it was originally installed, the gable ends of the building, uh, the play place, the brick will remain. Um, uh, uh, you can see where their, uh, the signage is proposed. Um, these, you know, these signs are essentially we're replacing in kind what's there right now. It's, it's the word mark is the, is the exact same thing. Um, and so uh, interior work is actually kind of minimal. Uh, a couple of the restrooms have some walls that have to be moved to bring them into ADA compliance. Um, the existing drive-through window is actually back here. It's getting moved to here as part of uh, when I talked about maximizing that distance between the order point and the window. Uh, but that area actually currently, at, at some point, was designed at least to be a, a drive-through window, so it's, it's kind of minimal work to, to, to swap those out. Um, there may be some decor work done that's sort of yet to be determined, but the number of seats will be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, it would be the same. Um, so that's the extent of the work. Um, we did go to the design review board last week. Um, gave, they loved it. Uh, How'd that go? Apparently, they Good. loved it. <laughs> so they, they got the same spiel you're getting, you're getting right here, and uh, they were they were fine with it. So uh, we just this is just a site mod modification to an existing. Uh, All right. Plan. So just go back to the the double drive through and sure. and just, let's just be comfortable that the pinch points right. there and the traffic that goes by on its way out. You still have to still go all the way around the building again after you drive through to get out. Circulation on the site is exactly the same as it was previously. Uh, we did uh, we did put this uh, this little concrete island in here uh, to discourage. We don't want folks jumping into line here, as you may know. We currently do have to. Uh, circumnavigate the building to get to the drive-through, and then if you want to turn left and to get out, and to get out, yes. So well, that if you want to go out that exit, there are other exits. Yeah, you can come out. Uh, yeah, yeah. We did we did do a uh, turning template for fire trucks on the site. 
with with the stacking, assuming the stacking, which we're looking to eliminate, but if it were to get all backed up, uh, truck can still get the whole way around with the, the drive through lane completely full. So but if you're, has if you're on your way out uh, to the traffic light on the left, you now that yeah, so you have to turn you turn. Is that pretty much the same? Same. This this uh, this will all be really exactly the okay. same up here. Yeah. Right. So it seems kind of tight the way it is there right now. The curb's coming back a little bit of the driveway. That's Right, isn't it the, the so corner of the driveway? Isn't that curve coming back a little bit? This, yeah. this curve here, yes. This okay. curve is actually getting pulled down. Just a little to make bit. a little easier. Yeah. yeah, this is this actually this turn in here is a little bit tighter right now. We're pulling that curve back a little bit to get folks through there. I mean, that's a full 18 foot width in there. Okay. The regular vehicles and even trucks with trailers. So with two lanes of cars, a fire truck can still get around. Yeah. That's deceiving. Because we need our delivery truck to get around sure, too. Sure. Yeah. Sure. If there's if there's traffic in here. Or, I'm sorry, if there's cars all along here, both of these lanes, mm -hmm. and the whole way back alongside the building here, I can still bring a fire truck in here and go the whole way around and not flip anybody. I have a question with regard the, to the uh, eastern end of the building. When cars come in off, off of Route 44, I'm curious, yeah, right there, have there ever been any, ever been any accidents there on with parking cars yeah, backing out? Yeah. Because you're Maybe back a into minor or whatever, but I no. Well, most think. people are turning right. Well, some people are going around the building. Well, if you but if you're coming in, you you come in, you've got to go around the back of the building, right? Yeah. So you go by those spot, you go by those spots on your right. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. three, really, three, it really three. hasn't been. Do these do these spaces get used? In? Yes. Okay. Mainly the close the spaces get used are the ones that are closer to the building. Yeah. yeah. I see people in here all the time. Correct. Obviously, so then the peak out into the back, the back block gets used a lot more. Are you going to get rid of the clock? No. Oh. You don't like the clock? The price was the last thing. Oh. I heard that. Has it been any? I'm not going to do the red, yellow, and white. Outside. No, the whole building will be in the Tote family. You can see the colors on that. Okay, all right. It's the new sort of arcade look for our buildings. I'm sure we fought hard for that landslide back in the day, and now we hate it. <laughs> yeah, this, this will be very close to what the building looks like. I'm not promising the colors only because that's just a matter of but it's similar. how they print out. But yes, the shades are yeah. no purples, no orange. So it's getting new, completely new cladding on the side, new siding. Yeah. Is this done in phases? Is it We've done over six weeks. Six weeks period? Yeah. That's our job. It's pretty fast. And yeah. the restaurant will stay open. Okay. So I'll do the outside, I'll do the drive through, and then we'll do the restrooms one at a time. It's a pretty big program now, we've been doing yeah. it for about three years. And this concept is not unique. They, they, we've done it, they've done it other places as well. The, the, the idea of a side-by-side -side drive through versus a long drive through yeah. and making the old building looks give it a new <coughs> version. Just use. put one into Winstead, actually, uh, in December. Some people sort of, they merge straight back into one, so it's a pretty sophisticated system with cameras that can tell these all that's coming. Not as nice as this one. No, well, what could be as nice as this thing? <laughs> <laughs> all right, any other questions? All right, so any discussion? So I'd be looking for a motion then. I move approval of the application. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Go get them. Thank yeah. you. Thank Thank you. you. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah. You guys did pretty good here tonight for all those public hearings. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So what happens? The now? game's just starting. So so fine. Yeah, I know. I, 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 oh, is there a hockey game? Yeah. Is there a hockey game? Yeah. <laughs> Funny how that works. Did we start the tape? Yeah. Sure. I hope so. I did. <laughs> yeah. I know you approved the plan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Good luck. All right. Thank you. All right. This. Uh, oh, there. What other items do we have? The village district project. Anybody know anything about that? <laughs> Well, I think there's a, uh, Hiram has Wednesday emailed us, there's a hearing for the WeTalk project, uh, Wednesday that's night. what that is, yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. And uh, there's a poster he sent around. We saw that, right? Yeah. Love the poster. And what's the marketing project? The marketing project, I'm, I'm aware of that, and, and, and there's no schedule for the next meeting because the consultant has to set that date. Uh, and I don't know what's going on with the Hartford. I don't either. A little bit of a mystery, yeah. 
heart for the market for the heart. Uh, well, before we adjourn, uh, is July 1st everybody here or people around? I think I'm on vacation. I think. A lot of people are. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's going to be a challenge. You're here? It's going to be a challenge to get a call. Okay. Right? You're here? Yeah. Well, there's two of you. I'm always here. I'm holding it open, but <laughs> well, let us it's a long that. drive back from the Cape, let's just say. <laughs> All right, I'm looking for a motion yeah, for adjourning. I, I would call first. Yeah. <laughs> Then move, we adjourn. Second. All in favor, say aye. aye. All right. Good job. Aye.